I'm Trent Griswold. My shooting career started at a young age, thanks to my dad, who's a Marine and 40-year law enforcement veteran. I've done just about everything in the shooting industry. Competition, instruction, consulting, you name it. It's been a wild ride. In 2009, I graduated with my degrees in gunsmithing and opened up shop to build long-range precision rifles with my brother. Come on in and take a look at some of our latest projects and adventures. Hey, what's happening guys? Trent here with Griswold Brothers Gunsmithing. Today, we're gonna pull the barrel on a bolt-action precision rifle. We're gonna cut it down. We're gonna recrown it. We're gonna thread it. I'm gonna walk you guys through the entire process. Without further ado, here we go. Alrighty guys, here she is. This is one of our shop rifles. Remington 700 short action, stainless steel. We've gone through and blueprinted it, chewed it up, put a nice match grade barrel on it. It's on the long side of things. We did this build in 223-556 hybrid, so it was kind of a showcase to see what you could expect out of this accuracy-wise from a cartridge that everybody has laying around. It worked out really, really well. It's a very accurate rifle, really fun to shoot, really cheap. It's a great training rifle. I'm a big proponent of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, with this suppressor on here, this thing becomes a fishing pole. That's my only gripe about it. So we're gonna cut it down. We're gonna go to wherever I think looks good as long as it's over 16 inches to keep it legal. And I'm gonna walk you through that step by step. I'm not gonna show you the tear down. It's a little bit boring, but I'll pick back up when I get a wrench on this action. All right, see you in a few. So we've got this thing in our action wrench, ready to pull the barrel. Now I've got to say, before we get going, right off the bat, these are steps that I would not necessarily take if this was a customer's rifle. We're going to be cutting some corners. I'm not so worried about finish on both the barrel and the action. If this customer wanted to keep this finished, then we would be taking extra steps to protect that. Or if we were going to recoat, obviously it wouldn't be an issue either. Not the case here, it's a shop rifle. I'm not worried about cosmetics in this case. Bring it over here to our vise. And we'll get this barrel off here. I do have a custom vise for these barrels, but since I built this rifle and it's been installed properly, I know it's gonna come off with ease. It's not gonna be a fight. I don't even need too much pressure there. I'm just gonna give it a little crack here. Boom. Money, money. That's all we need. Get back over to the bench. We'll pull this wrench and see what we got. Barrel's back on hand tight. And let's figure out where we wanna cut this thing. I've made a mark right here at 16 to make sure that we don't go any shorter than that. But uh, looking at it right now, it, I don't know if I wanna go any longer than that either. So I might cut it just above 16, maybe 16 and a half to allow for some uh, adjustment, I guess you could say if I need to, need to recrown or something along those lines. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna take the bandsaw to it somewhere in front of that, that line there, and that's gonna be my length. There she is, let's take her to the bandsaw and make this thing a little bit lighter, a little bit shorter. We've got our barrel in here. We're gonna cut just in front of that 16 inch mark. Again, I'm gonna keep mentioning this so you guys don't think I'm a hack. I would not normally do this to a customer's barrel who was concerned about keeping this finish. I'm not in this case. Or if we were gonna refinish, we wouldn't be as concerned either. Let's cut this thing down.
there she is. Nice little chunk. We got a bucket of those. Sixteen inch barrel. Let's mock it up, see what she looks like here. That's more like it. I'm liking that already. I'm liking that already. Somewhere in there. Much more manageable. All right, next step. Get this sucker in the lathe. We're gonna face it off and dial it in. Okay, here we go, lathe mode. Took the sweater off. You don't wanna be wearing any loose clothing around a lathe. Eye protection, safety first, then teamwork, remember that. We've got her chucked up here in a custom four jaw chuck that we made. We've got a spider on the other end. You might be wondering, how do I get a 16 inch barrel in here? How does it go all the way through the headstock? That I'm gonna show you in the next video when we do a full build. As far as how we dialed this in, we used a grizzly rod method which you can also see on another one of my videos that I've posted already. We will be getting into a very deep explanation of how we do that in our full build video coming up here very shortly. This thing's all chucked up and ready to go. It's indicated. We've just got a rough face on it. So now we need to start cutting our tenon for our threads. So come over here, our little cheat sheet. This is gonna be a half by 28. It says that our, our length can be anywhere from 0.5 to 0.6 inches. So we're not picky on this one. Let's split the diff and go 0.55. I've got a couple different calipers here. These are my, my beaters. You'll see why here in just a sec. So we're gonna bring it up to 0.55. Like them. Let that dry a minute. Okay, this is why I want to use a kind of a junky set of calipers. You don't want to do this with your nice ones or use your, uh, your buddy's caliper. All right, now we've got our mark. That is 0.55 uh, inches in, in length there. So we're gonna scrape this thing down to a half an inch nominal. And here we go. So you notice I'm using uh, uh, something other than my fingers to clear these chips, because if they snag, you will get cut. I forgot where I was at on my dial here. Whenever you do that, you can come up to it, to where you kiss it, uh, start to kiss it. All right, there. Uh, I was at 0.1. So go over to 0.1. I'm taking 20,000 passes, so 
1.2, send it. I'm gonna clear these chips here before something happens. Sometimes you'll get a chip that'll get stuck on there, you'll fling it around and it just throws things all over the shop. That's why it's super important to wear safety glasses. And these things are like razors. This, is, this stainless steel is, is sharp and it'll do some damage. So also that's why we're not wearing any long clothing. That stuff will snag. I'm sure you can imagine what could happen. All right, here we go, back to it. All right, so we just took a measurement. We are 15 thousandths over our final diameter for our tenon here. So we're gonna dial in 15 thousandths. On this pass, we're also gonna come in and clean up the shoulder as well in one shot. I don't wanna be diving back in there, bumping my nice clean finished surface and then cleaning up the shoulder. So we're gonna come in 15 thousandths, make our cut over to the shoulder, go in a kiss and then pass on the way out. And let's get that going. My tool, my left hand cutting tool right now is just past perpendicular so that we're able to cut on the way out as well. You want to make sure you're set up that way so you don't have a shoulder that's not completely perpendicular. Look at that, literally perfect. Did you expect anything else? Okay, so next thing we gotta do, let's lay out some dicum on the tenon and let's get our tool post set up with our threading bit, dial everything in there and cut some threads. All right, let's get this guy set up for some threads. So when I was in gunsmithing school, you don't touch a machine probably until after at least a year. Before you do that, you spend about a week just grinding lathe tool bits. And at, at the time, it's incredibly frustrating because you just want to get on a machine, but it teaches you a lot of things. I use a lot of manufactured bits like this one here. This is just a, a carbide left hand cutting tool and that works great for just chopping away at things but in the gunsmithing trade and i'm sure any machinist will tell you that there are a lot of times where nobody makes a bit that's going to accomplish what you need it to do this is this is a perfect example i need to get pretty close to this big fat shoulder here even this bit that i made on previous uh four previous builds is going to be pushing it. I might grind this back a little bit to give me a little more clearance here. This is a, a huge, huge, huge shoulder uh, on a little tiny shank, little tiny tenon here. So comes in handy to know how to make your own custom bits. I highly recommend doing that if you're getting into gunsmith machining. I've got a whole drawer full of custom little bits that make my job a lot easier and it's a lot cheaper. You can buy a whole ton of this stock for for not very much and uh, it just takes a few minutes to to build a bit so i'm going to go to the grinder i'm going to bring this back just to kiss and then we'll get the setup our 60 degree threading bit is in there but i'm going to finish truing it up on camera here first let's throw some dicum on our tenon <laughs> We 
but we've got our fish here. The fish is how we're going to set up our bit and make sure that it is at the proper angle. Now we get a 60 degree thread, nice and even. You're also gonna use this tool when you're grinding your bit to make sure that you get that 60 degrees perfect. This is probably not gonna show up on camera. This is pretty precise stuff as far as getting this dialed in. It's gotta be perfect. Okay. Tighten her down. And we wanna make sure that our bit height is good. Yep, just a kiss low is what, what we want. And this is not the only way to do this. This is the way we're gonna do it today on this barrel. We're gonna come in on our compound and just kiss it, zero out, and then we're gonna make passes, nice small passes by coming in at 60 degrees until we get our thread depth set. This is a little bit slow, but I like it because it's not going to upset the barrel in the four jaw. We're gonna keep things nice and concentric, dialed in perfectly. Again, a little tedious, but we're going for precision, not speed. Without further ado, let's get our lathe set up to cut these threads. I'm gonna come over here. We're cutting half by 28. So 28 threads is gonna be LB8S. We're on B, S, 8. And we're on low, V, threading. We're gonna take this sucker down all the way to 50 RPM. And go to low. So that's 50 RPM there. I'm gonna come over to zero here, zero this out. And I'm gonna come in until I just kiss the top of the dicum, and that's gonna be my zero. Okay, there it is. Got my zero, back off, back to zero. I'm gonna do a zero pass and just take some off of the dicum, and I'm gonna check that with my thread gauge. So this should just be scraping off the top of the dicum here. That's exactly what it's doing. And put the brakes on when we get close to our shoulder there. I'm gonna go to neutral, still engaged, and I'm gonna walk it till we get a little bit close to our shoulder there. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark there so I know when to stop. It's just kind of a reference. I don't need to watch it like a hawk. We're gonna keep this engaged on the screw the entire process. This is just how I do it. So I'm gonna back it out, go to high, reverse. Back to low. Come on in to our zero and come in with like a 4,000th, 5,000th pass. First, before we do that, let's check and make sure this is indeed 28 threads per inch. Thread gauge here. Looks 
Looks like 28 to me. All right, we are good. We're gonna throw a little bit of a lubricant on there. And let's go ahead and make our first cut. And there's our mark, neutral, back it off into high, back here, back into low gear, a little more lubricant, back to our zero here, <clears throat> excuse me, come in another five thousandths or so, wash, rinse, repeat, let's do it again. We'll check in once we get a little bit closer to these threads being finished. All right, so here's what's kind of nice about cutting threads this way. When we're cutting them on center, it's hard to check your threads with whatever it is you're gonna put on there. We can actually fit these threads to our muzzle device, which is kind of cool. We can pull off at any time and just check and sneak up on it, which is pretty sweet. So I'm gonna clean this up and we're gonna throw our suppressor on or attempt to and see how close we are to finishing these threads. We've got everything cleaned up and unfortunately this camera isn't gonna pick up how pretty these threads are, but they're beautiful. Nice and shiny, no chatter. And I kind of lucked out stopping where I did. This is why it's always good to check because this thing threads on beautifully. Tight, a little bit of wiggle in there. You do want some movement on threads. If you don't do that, you're not gonna get a perfect mate against your shoulder. And that is what actually is gonna give you the accuracy in keeping things concentric. So they're, they're tight, they're precise, but we do get a good butt against the shoulder. That's what we're looking for. So we're gonna stop right there and call this good for the thread portion. Now, if this was a customer's rifle and they didn't know exactly what was going to live on this barrel. Uh, they wanted to swap out between multiple different muzzle devices. We would do a relief cut back here. Not all muzzle devices have a relief cut. This one does. This one lives on this rifle, so we're just going to leave it. We still got to come in here and finish up our crown. I'm going to put a little bit of a bevel on the tenon so that our leads stay nice and pretty. Lap the crown and we'll slap her back together. So we're gonna cut our face and then cut our bevel with one set up here. Reverse direction. Magic green on an eraser. And by polishing that, that's going to be really easy to clean, wipe carbon right off that sucker. Now we got a lap and we're done. All right, we've got some lapping compound here. got a brass lap. This is another one of those tools that I made in college. Of course you can buy them, but you really ought to get good at making tools. It teaches you so much. So we've got a good little coating and lapping compound on there. For our last step, we're just going to lap this crown. further. We're looking for a ring all the way around 
the grooves, not so much the lands, but the grooves. That's looking gorgeous. Yeah, that's what we want. So when you think you're done, what you're gonna wanna do is get a Q-tip and kinda defluff it a bit so you got all these little fibers hanging off of it. And you wanna run that and drag it out. And as you're dragging it out, it shouldn't be catching any of those. If you do, you've got a burr somewhere, you need to keep lapping. We're looking really good. So we're done, that's it. We're gonna pull this thing out of the lathe, screw her back together, and see what she looks like. Here she is, finished product. I'm stoked with it, I really like it. Way more proportionate, way more manageable. I measured it overall with the suppressor, we're at 22 inches. So that's still shorter than what we were at before, you can see what we took off there. Yeah, happy with it. Pretty easy project. More than one way to skin that cat for sure, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight on how to cut, crown, and thread a barrel on a bolt action precision rifle. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hey, if you like the video, hit that like button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. More importantly, comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about the video you just saw. And also give me some ideas for the next video. If there's anything in particular you guys wanna see, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe. Really look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.